Hello and happy Thursday, everybody. Okay, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. I haven't made videos for a couple weeks. My kids are out of school and I have boys. It gets very noisy, especially when they play video games, which one is doing right now. So, um, this is especially for Sandy from Left is Right Crochet. Um, and or anybody who uses the velvet yarn. Now, this blanket I did in C2C last year. Um, I started it in January when I got this color. This is the Pagoda from Michaels. Um, this is the, I think this is like Gray Orchid or something, and I can't remember what color this green is. But... Um, at the this purple and that green is from Joann's. I <laughs> I ordered the pagoda and the majestic purple, which is the darker purple that you saw, and I'll show it show it in a minute. Last year, I was only able to get two balls of the pagoda, and no balls of the majestic purple. Even though it was in stock when I ordered it, it immediately went out of stock. And that was the, I guess, the second rollout or whatever from the factory. I, I, I'm not exactly sure how that works. But there wasn't any in the store. And so I had bought three balls. I ordered two. I had, had one to try, and then I ordered two more. And I wanted the purple so bad. Well, I decided to go ahead and do the C2C anyway and do it with the orchid and whatever color that it's a teal something or other I, I can't remember anyway so after a while I st and I don't I, I don't remember when I first started noticing I know that people had said online about it looping how it loops out I have no idea but here's a smaller loop right here is a smaller loop and I thought you know maybe and this is a, an even smaller loop but then you get loops like this that are big loops and this is not the biggest loop that there is so there's big loops like this and like this and I thought well why is it doing that I mean somebody said that they think it's because of because when it stretches it like loses its whatever See all these loops here? This loop and this loop. There's a loop and there's a loop. And they're twisted too, so that it seems like. So I thought, well, maybe if it's. Maybe I wasn't crocheting it tight enough. Here's some more bigger loops. And like I said, these are not the biggest loops. Now, the biggest loops are up here further. And I would have to, because I always play with them. <laughs> okay, so there's kind of a bigger loop. Um, here's two bigger loops. But see, it doesn't look... it. Sorry for that interruption. <laughs> that was my 16-year-old. He's almost 16. Okay, so I can't quite find it right now. Like some of the... I mean, all these bigger loops... And they, they're all twisted, so I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's, like, um, maybe it's not tight enough, maybe it got twisted accidentally, I don't know. I don't know why it does it or how it does it. I just know that it does it. So then, when I found out that they had brought the velvet back at Michael's, I had messaged, or I had left a comment at um on their Instagram now this purple this is the majestic purple and this is the pagoda and this is what I wanted my blanket to be in this color and this color and I think it looks amazing now this color looks really really light and it's not that light but um I think they look amazing together I wanted to do another blanket so I kind of, I did want it to do, 
I did want to do C2C. I hate doing straight back and forth simply because I don't see an end to the project. I love Amigurumi because I can see an end to the project. I love the C2C because once I, you know, you go so far and then you start closing up one side and then you are closing up both sides and then you're done. And that's why I love C2C. But as I'm doing this, I'm noticing that my, there's one right there and it's just a little one right there that's pulling out already. And there's another, another little loop right there. So I decided, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess, is to, I'm going to take that one apart and I'm going to, um, after I get, after I crochet this, now I decided to do it, this is a little more than the width of my bed. It's actually probably the length of my bed. Let's see. I don't know for sure. Anyway, um, it's probably even more than the length of my bed. And yes, I do have a hook attached. Um, it is more than the length of my bed. Well, we'll see how we, how it works out then. Cause maybe, maybe I'll just, maybe it'll just be this way instead of, inst well, maybe it'll be, maybe it will be, um, so this is running the length of the bed rather than the width of the bed. Um, so anyway, glutton for punishment. That's me. So I decided to start this. So this is half double crochets. All half double crochets. 123 stitches. I crocheted 125 on the bottom and how I came up with 123 I don't know. But I am not ripping it out. Um... Yes, my kids are yelling. Well, my one... Actually, I think they're both yelling. Sorry. Um, so, anyway. I just wanted to um, put that out there. And on another quick note. Like, super, super quick. So, these are my... Um, these are my... Uh, stitch markers that I made. And... That one says, bite me. Um... This is my most favoritest one. That's the Slayer Scythe. I'm a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. And you got vampire teeth. Now, what I did with these, I got a bracelet. And then I took the bracelet part. Um, but what I did is notice these are the, the earring. Focus. I don't know if it's going to focus or not. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Focus, focus, focus. Maybe it's not going to focus. That's on Yonka's um, Vengeance Pendant. So we'll see. We'll look at it down here because it'll focus better down here. So these are the, the earring ones. And I used a split ring um, instead, of, instead of what's called a jump ring. I used a split ring. So it's, it's a miniature key ring is basically what it is. And I squeezed the earring part together to go into the split ring. And that's how it stays in the stitch. So then... If I can get this off... So then you just flip the flip the the jump ring down to open it up and I can't get it with one hand. Anyway, you flip the jump ring down to open it up. And then you flip the jump ring back up the thing to close it off. And so that's what I did. Um, I did buy, buy the lobster claws, but I, 
Um, I tried this before I bought the lobster claws, and then I bought the lobster claws also. But I think this is how when I use when I make my own stitch markers, I think this uh, this is how I'm going to make them. Um, because I like them. They're easy to they're. You can use them for a bigger stitch, and they're relatively easy to get on and off. You still have to use both hands. Um, with a lobster claw, a lobster claw, you don't necessarily have to use both hands, but with these you do. Um, anyway, and this one down here is just a just a steak. And then these ones. Um, So, let's see, we have a dagger, why are we not flipping the right way, I don't know, okay, so, the gem of Amara, the The bee from Buffy from the um, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered episode. That one just says Buffy across what she wears. And then that she got from Angel. And then Anyanka's Vengeance. So these are the stitch markers that I made. Um, it actually came in a bracelet. The picture's the bracelet. Except for the Slayer Scythe, and that came separately. This The picture's for the bracelets on my Instagram, SugarMama2001. Um, so anyway, this was supposed to be quick, and I guess 12 minutes and 30 seconds is quick for me, or 12 minutes and whatever, 15 minutes even is quick for me. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit quicker than that, but that's okay. So anyway, for any of you wanting to use the velvet yarn, if you don't mind it looping, do, do a double crochet, but a double crochet is really too big of a stitch. If you're going to do a double crochet, you're going to want to step it down, and I don't even know what size it says to use for the hook. It says to use a 6.5, and I used I used a J for the for this, and I used a J for this, and I used a J for the the one with this color, and the and this color. Um, I used a J for the other C2C that I started that I'm gonna rip out. This one is eventually gonna rip get ripped out because I need to use this and the other one like this out of this one, and then I'll just roll up the rest of the. Um, the rest of the yarn that I have on, on, in that, whatever. And we'll see how many skeins that I use from, um, for what I'm doing now. Because if I can use less than eight skeins, hot diggity dog. Because this took eight skeins. A little less than eight skeins, but I'm just saying eight skeins for a queen size over the top, no hangover. Uh corner to corner so um in cor yeah in corner to corner um so and I I didn't really calculate this out I just calculated out the how many rows I would have for um for one skein which is about almost 17 rows it's like 16.9 something anyway I'm gonna sign off um hopefully I will be back on Monday to show you all the goodies and everything from Christmas and whatever. Um, I, yeah. So have a wonderful weekend and happy yarning. Bye.